What's going on guys? What we're going to focus on today is a topic that was brought up by one of you guys in the comment section and what you guys were asking was how can I avoid getting disarmed? And there's a few things to go over, not a lot, so this video is going to be fairly brief. Um, so the first thing that I want to talk about when it comes to avoiding a disarm is most importantly things that I can control in my own shell. So one of the things that we learn in Filipino martial arts, specifically when I teach it, is that we always need to complete the strike. Whether that be a slash or a snap, my strikes either going to hit and go through and come back to a closed position on the opposite side, or it's going to snap and come back to the point of origin. The reason why we do that is whether our strike connects or not, we want to make sure that we put our entire commitment into it and we're in a position that we can secure our own weapon. If I'm being lazy or if I'm leaving my weapon out, that's going to give Raiden the opportunity to either grab the stick, grab my hand, and these are the positions that's going to allow him to eventually get me into being disarmed. If Raiden doesn't have this, you have to understand that when I am being offensive, and offensive simply just means striking, there's absolutely no way you can grab my hand. Absolutely no way. The only way is if we're in close range here, where I'm already... Uh, you know, naturally in a grappling range where if I try to strike, Raiden can stop this and he can stop this over here and that is going to happen due to the range. But if I'm in medium to long range, if Raiden tries to grab this, he's probably going to get hit. Right? No one is really going to strike like this, especially if they are committed to the to strike and they actually want to do damage. No one is ever just going to, you know, slash way through. This is more so done for technical training, partner training. I don't want to hurt Raiden, so I'm not going to, you know, fully hit him and go through with that. that. That's nonsense. So weapon retention is most important when it comes to myself. Again, making sure that whatever I'm doing in whatever range I'm in, I want to make sure that my stick is in a place where it can be utilized for me and not against me. I want to make sure that this isn't going to backfire on me. Whether it's clipped nice and tight on this side, clipped in this closed position, whether it's behind, whatever your system, your technique pertains to, you want to make sure that this is not in range where it can be grabbed and secured by your opponent. Now when it comes to the actual techniques, let's just say I get into a position here. There are a few things you can do. You can slap, you can slap, right? There are things that I can use that to flow in my offense and make sure that I can take away the, the countermeasures here. Will it happen as cleanly as that? Can't say for sure. This is just a facilitation on being able to flow our offense. Right, so there are, there are these uh, quote unquote releases, right? There's these releases that I can use to flow, but again, when it comes to application, you can never truly understand what that situation is going to pertain to until you're there. So that has to be a split second decision, whether that's completely clean like you just saw, or it's rough and, and, and completely disoriented, it's gonna happen regardless. Now when we're on the topic specifically of impact weapons, that being a stick, a baton, there is the, the notion that, you know, essentially I can grab this wherever I need to grab it. It's a stick. It's not going to cut me. And so let's just say I end up in that situation again where for some reason Raiden has a grip on my weapon because he's more likely to do this than a sword. He would never grab a sword. So we end up in a, in a stalemate where we have the exact same grip. Our power is the exact same. So if he pulls and I pull, we're kind of in this tug of war, right? And there's really nothing we can do. The thing is that because it's a stick, I'm doing a concept that is normally done in empty hand. That's called a two on one. So right now I have one on the stick. When I have two on one, I can use this to have leverage on both sides, both on my standard grip where it normally was and where Radiant's grip is. That way we're not playing this tug of war game and seeing who's going to let go first. I can use that because we're connected to the stick and I can use that very easily even if Raiden pulls. I can use that because he's still connected. If he lets go, I don't need to do this anymore. But I can use that as long as I understand the anatomy of how his body works. I understand where the power is, his position. I can use certain two-on-one techniques to get him into a submissive position, get him to let go of the stick. And then again, strike him with either my right hand, my left hand, because I have that option to do so in impact weapons. Right? So before you get into all these specific scenarios and all these specific techniques, the first thing and the most important thing is, again, your very own weapon retention techniques, being able to be precise with your striking, not only in terms of targeting, 
but in this case the framework having a start and a finish that's going to benefit you and not be the reason why you lose in whatever situation it is right complete the strike bring it back to a point where it is confidently in your grasp and not being able to be you know detained or potentially disarmed by your opponent or uh, an aggressor in this case so if you guys like this video, if this made sense to you and you were able to learn something, please do me a favor, comment below and let me know. Give this video a thumbs up if you haven't already. And until next time, catch you guys there.